$2.2 billion. That's how much it took to make the VR industry relevant again. It's how much Facebook paid in 2004 to acquire Oculus, the maker of the upcoming Oculus Rift. Welcome to the Big Bang Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jorge Barba. Um, this, on this first episode, we'll talk about the VR in the context of our lives, not just the gaming and film industry, which are you know, taking away all the hype. Um, you know, virtual reality is a fact. It's coming to, to stores near you next year. Also with me is my co-host, Adrian Pedrin. So, um, you know, this is our first, first episode. Um, we picked a kind of like a very hype topic. But uh, it, it, I think it's very important because you and I have discussed this before. Um, yes, we have. Yes, we have. Um, and, and I hate it. I hate the, the fake VR they are trying to sell us. The fake VR they're trying to sell us. Um, so what do you think of VR? Um, you know, what are some interesting applications of VR do you think are, or non-interesting applications of VR? <laughs> When you say that the fa there's fakeness in it. Well, to me, the Oculus Rift is just like a big screen. It's like a, if you had a 16-inch screen in front of your eyes. That, for me, that's it. I haven't worn one or used one. But it's not virtual reality. It's just a big screen really, really, really close to your face. You, you don't feel anything. You, you don't do anything. You just see. You just see. So, so what would be virtual reality? Um, you need to see, feel. You need if if you jump in real life, you jump in in a game or in a digital place per se, in digital playground. You jump, whatever you do in real life, you don't have to do it in real life. You can maybe you're just like lying down and there's like a helmet connected to your brain. And you think you're doing all that stuff, but to me that is virtual reality. It's it's, it's not a real reality. It's virtual. Yeah. So I, I guess one of the you know, constraints, or one of the other constraints with with virtual reality is is the movement. So I mean, if I mean, for example, if if and I go and I you know it's kind of like similar to this to this movie called Tomorrowland. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but. Uh, basically, how they recruit people is that they give them this pin. So when they they touch the pin, it you know it takes it to to another reality. And in the, one of the scenes where where this girl you know she's being recruited, she takes this pin and she starts walking. And at a certain point, she starts you know um, she doesn't she she thinks she's in another in another location, but in reality, she's just you kind of imagining it. And she starts walking into this <laughs> into this lake. <laughs> and then it becomes real that it's just something that's taking over her mind um, because of the movement you know it's constraining her movement even then I mean in, in this movie she doesn't have anything out over her head it's just you know she's just touching a pin uh, which I think is, is kind of like uh, you know where this could be <laughs> at, at some point uh, <laughs> eventually eventually you know I don't think that's going to happen pretty soon but that could be that could be one scenario but you know what we have right now is Essentially, you know, like a big a big box in our head, um, which shows shows us some stuff, um, but we're just constrained by movement. Um, because even if we're playing, uh, I don't know, first person shooter or something, I mean, we can't you know go all over the place and uh, you know climb that tree over there and you know take headshots from it or some, something like that. I mean, <laughs> eventually we're gonna hit a wall or or something like that, right? Or you're you're gonna want to climb something and you can't because there's nothing there or there's a wall or whatever i don't know i, I just I, I to me it seems like they're they're like hey this is vr but it's actually not it's, it's not even the baby of vr it's just a giant screen in your face and I, I know they're doing stuff like you can put that on and there's this device that you could with your socks, you you, you can walk in, in in the same place, and it's it's that doesn't have friction or something like that, and it's kind of getting there, but it, it's still you're just walking, you're not like running and jumping and dodging bullets and all that fun stuff. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's it's, I think I think the other you know the other thing that connects connects it is, 
augmented reality where you know there's something you know they're putting something in your head or in front of you which you can actually um, you know to a certain point interact with uh, but still I mean it's it's I think that one has a a more clearer future right now than BR BR does in you know in the context of everything you know because right now I mean BR is 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 kind of just you know focused on the gaming uh, the porn <laughs> The, the, I mean, all these uh, kind of fringe things that, you know, usually always take all the attention. Um, but eventually, you know, how, how does it, you know, cascade to the rest of the stuff that we do on a daily basis? I mean, and I know, for example, when Facebook bought, bought Oculus, I mean, they were looking at the bigger picture. I mean, they, they talk about, um, you know, creating worlds where people aren't just interacting through the computer. I mean, they're actually seeing, you know, you and I could be in the same world with, our, with the thing in the head. And we're interacting in some undisclosed location. I mean, um, how is that going to look like? And and you know what 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 does what does it mean for you know in, in other contexts beyond um, you know just uh, you know gaming, <laughs> which is right now is very niche. I mean, because most people don't play, don't do games still. <laughs> but they will. They will. <laughs> they will. I no. mean, everything. If you, if they ever manage to create a virtual world. I mean, it's, it's basically going to become a game. It's going to be a so, game. So kind of like Second Life? Yeah, but you're going to be there. But you're going to be there. Yeah, and you'll never want to come out. Why? Why would you? Yeah, you know, that, I remember that, you know, when Second Life was on, I remember there was, I don't know if it was, I mean, there's probably a bunch of, pers of people, but, you know, this particular person, I, I, I read in the news somewhere that this this guy used to spend all his time inside um <laughs> second life <laughs> he didn't want to come he didn't want to leave his computer i mean because he wasn't living the fantasy of <laughs> the full-on fantasy of just spending his avatar is is another essentially it's an alter ego <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's an alter ego um and i think that's you know as you're saying it's it's you know to a certain degree alter egos take on various identities um, some people want to be good, some people want to be bad. I mean, so which one's going to be which in virtual reality? I mean, I think that's the other interesting angle to it. Um, I mean, can virtual reality make us better people? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. It essentially will be the same thing, but let's say they create a, a digital, a huge game, a digital world where everyone can interact and Let's say that just how we're addicted to Facebook and everything else, we become addicted to the virtual world. Then we start living inside of it. We start <laughs> doing jobs. Because essentially, video games right now are, are that. They're jobs, like World of Warcraft. It's not all fun and games. It's You, you have a job. You have to grind. You have to level up. You have, to, you have quests. And those are jobs. You're doing a job just that you're paying to do the job. So eventually that's going to be a, that's going to transfer over to the digital world. But like Jorge said, it, some people want to be bad. Some people want to be good. The difference here is that I don't know if there's, there's going to be rules like you can't kill a player or a, <laughs> a digital avatar in certain zones or you can't, but... You're going to get banned or stuff like that. And uh, let's say a, a, a guy who in real life is a weak guy or, or he looks like he's weak. He could be a superhero in the game. He could grind his ass off and level up and have the best items. And he could he could practically kick uh, the ass of a bully, of, of a real life bully. So I don't know if maybe we'd have more heroes in that mm. game. Interesting. And more villains. Interesting. So, so you know, if, and that kind of you know takes me to this other thing that uh, was happening not too long, not too. I mean, it's still going on, but it's you don't hear it as often as maybe five years ago. It's, it's this concept called gamification, where you know basically um, in in non non gaming environments, um, you literally you know put you know game type mechanics mechanisms to make people do certain things so i mean 
in, in VR, if, if we're, we're, you know, imagining a scenario where, you know, there's a virtual world and we're trying to act as, act out as a, a alter egos, um, <laughs> you know, this gamification looks like a, like a, like a, a pretty, you know, like something's going to happen. <laughs> And it's, it's going to be, you know, it's it's, and it's going to be part of that world, whether we like it or not. I mean, it could be kind of like training, like training, yeah, for people who like, are not used to, you know, like the, <laughs> like the Matrix, like the Matrix. It's going to be like the Matrix, um, only not as dark, only not as dark. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, and this and this takes us also to you know to think about as you know, for example, the the game game designers or the gaming studios as, you know, acting as architects in this world of virtual reality. Um, because I don't see, you know, traditional architectural firms wanting to get into this thing immediately. <laughs> I mean, essentially, they are, they're not even looking at it. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, if they're looking at it right now, they're probably just thinking, oh, maybe we can create an experience for this person before they buy their house or buy this office space or whatever. But, I mean, they're not really looking at it. You know, in the future, a bunch of people are going to be stuck in this thing and <laughs> we're going to have to, you know, because that happened in Second Life. Remember that? I mean, there were yeah. there were superstores and all this shit. I mean, it's you insane. Can buy <laughs> you can buy virtual things, stuff yeah, with real money. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember this? There was. I mean, I, I. I mean, I used to play Second Life not for for too long, but I. I. I, I remember when it was time when they used to do concerts on Second Life. No, I don't remember. <laughs> I played it once, and I had no idea what it, what I was doing. And then I said, "I'm gonna go back to World of Warcraft." <laughs> I'm an elf, so. <laughs> now, the, now the, another another angle here is that, you know, as as uh, well, you're a parent. I'm not. Um, you know, to a certain degree, are we, we, you and I, we, we, we came into this world with, with, uh, you know, with video game controllers in our hands. That's what we woke up to. <laughs> um, you know, kids, kids nowadays are waking up to a world where everything's, you know, games are there. Um, everything's a click away, um, and and you know, the next generation is going to arrive with virtual reality in their hands. So this is going to change everything <laughs> because they will not know anything else. I mean, how how do we as 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 you know as its parents as as grown ups you know balance you know the fun and you know actually you know as I was saying you know or is this can this thing make us better people? Mm, maybe, but there's a reason why porn is king on the internet and not educational games or websites. Or no, like... I know. I mean. <laughs> You know, it's insane that I, I was I was on Twitter two days ago and I saw this tweet from the economist. And usually the economist, you know, you know, publishes these these charts and, and there was this chart about Pornhub. So Pornhub.com received 18 billion visits in a whole year. <laughs> 18 billion visits in a whole fucking year. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. And then you can see... You know, they, they even segmented it by, by country and the, the, the stuff that people in that specific country are oh, looking yeah. for. Oh, yeah. They do a lot it's of that It's ridiculous. Stuff. It's ridiculous. But, <laughs> and, you know, in porn, you know, obviously the porn chops are already getting into the VR thing. I mean, it's it's not, um, it's no secret. <laughs> it's no secret. Um, it's just, a, you know, it's all these industries that are on the fringe. They're always, you know, the first ones to get on these, these new mediums. Um, the porn industry, yeah. The porn industry. They the decide industry. what lives and dies. Do you remember the Blu-ray and HD DVD war? Yeah. You know why Blu-ray went? No. Because the porn industry started using Blu-rays oh. instead of HD DVDs. Hot, yeah. Created <laughs> demand for the Yeah, so, so that's why the Blu-ray won. That was it. Porn was the deciding factor. Wow. So, um... You know, it, it seems that we're getting into this this notion that uh, people will eventually prefer virtual over reality. Why uh, not? What I'm thinking right now, I, I hadn't thought of this before, is that, okay, so people will be like, yeah, I, I'm thinner in, in the game or in virtual reality or whatever. Um, I have more 
take money in the game, have a better house than in real life. And if you're able to be inside, not just with a headset and you're looking at screens really close to your eyes, but if you're able to be inside and live there and walk and jump and feel and everything, why would you want to live here <laughs> where you can have everything you want? But then you're going to be like, oh, I, I want to buy a bigger house. Oh, I have to I have to get fake money. I have to work here. What can I do to get fake money? So maybe that's going to like just create uh, another reality inside of virtual reality where, where a lot of people will also be like pissed off that they have to work at a certain place or do certain things. Maybe it's fun, funner, but it's still going to be like the same dynamic as in real life. You're just going to be able to create whatever you want. And if you're a hacker or you're, uh, you have like a knowledge of all that stuff, maybe you're, you're going to be able to build the houses or, or modify them or hack them or mod them. So what, I mean, so, okay, so this is interesting because essentially the, 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 the traditional rules in reality are going to be, you know, blown up. Um, you know, an architect in the, in the or reality can be an architect in virtual reality, but it, he doesn't have to be the same or will not be the same, most likely. I mean, anybody will be able to, I mean, if we're imagining a reality where, you know, it's becoming like a platform, um, and, you know, tools eventually will be created, um, anybody will be able to create. Yeah. I've seen online a few of, uh, a few guys that are not architects, they're actually studying uh, video game design and they're pretty good at creating levels. And that's all, all that's gonna take. If you know how to create something and if you put time into it, you're gonna be able to create whatever you want and people are gonna want to buy castles and and whatever. I mean, there's, why would you wanna live in a city if you can live anywhere in the world? Anywhere in space and time. You can live in the Middle Ages in a small town or in a big town, you can live in a castle, you can live in a shack, you can live in a fantasy world that someone created and it's super weird or creepy. You, you can live anywhere you want and be with people that are weird and, I don't know, it's just infinite. Just infinite. There's not enough time for me. You know, I was thinking, what, what, would, I what, what would I create? <laughs> In virtual, and I, I was thinking immediately. I thought, well, I, I would like to so have something like Superman's Temple of Solitude, only I would have it in the clouds, <laughs> 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 not in the, not in the, in the, in the North Pole or whatever that, that thing is. That <laughs> have it in the clouds somewhere, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or in some undisclosed island somewhere. <laughs> you can have it anywhere. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean, and. and Obviously, I would have. I would like to have. Um, you can have it hidden in plain sight. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's insane. I mean, you start, you know, thinking of all these ideas. Um, I mean, so, so, what alter ego would you create in 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 virtual? <laughs> um, I want to say I don't know, but that would be a lie. I think everyone, especially if we play games, we thought of that. Yeah. I mean, I even have like a few alter egos on World of Warcraft. I haven't played it in a bit, but all those guys, all the characters I've created are uh, are some sort of alter ego or someone I want to be or want to do. But I don't know. I mean, I think I'd go crazy. I'd be a good guy, but I'd go crazy. I'd probably try and get a, a lightsaber of sorts, um, some cool laser guns and stuff like that, and just go around killing, uh, doing quest, but if, if, if you put it on a, like, okay, well, it's a society, it's not a fucking game, okay, I don't know then, <laughs> probably like a, yeah, like a superhero, saving people and stuff like that, <laughs> showing everyone around and trying to build stuff, see what I can create, because I'm a creator, at the end of the day, I'm a creator, so I'd get into all that stuff, creating, seeing if it can be modified, what can you do with it, and all that stuff? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, I do, but I, I'm not sure exactly what 
my alter ego would be. I do know it would be something with, uh, obviously I would like to have, you know, the superpowers that I don't have here <laughs> be, 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 become available to me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, my, my whole thing is to, uh, you know, to solve problems and, and make things better. So, I mean, it would be in that direction. So that, that takes you into superhero zone. But also, I would like something to be, you know, I don't know, like I'm, 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 I'm really, you know, James Bond. So I love James Bond. So I, hope, I would have to be something where, you know, so there's this, this angle of espionage or something. <laughs> I don't know how exactly, but I mean, I'm just thinking. I mean, you have, if you have, I mean, and this is, you know, this is insane because um, if, if we then we take a step take a step out here I mean and, and, and talk about just pure creation um, you know the best most people can't start with a blank slate um, mm -hmm. it's very hard for most people to start with a blank slate I mean you have to give them some kind of direction like like, like options and stuff so I mean this is gonna be very interesting if inspiration if we get yeah if we get to that point where uh, you know there's a virtual world and we can all just uh, pretty much do whatever the hell, the hell we want um, so I mean, that's if if we leave it open, that creates us whole sorts of challenges. Um, <laughs> I mean, in 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 because I mean, there's you know there needs to be some kind of constraint on there um, to really have you know some focus and some some good outcomes. There's a there's an anime. Sword Art Online that pretty much deals with all that stuff. The first season is one game, and the second season is like uh, a few games, uh, all using the same source code as the first one. But the, it, it's just like different. Um, uh, the original one is more like kind of medievalish, and then there's like an elf one, and it, it just. There's another that's like futuristic with laser guns and sniper guns and all that stuff. But I, I think it can't be just one big digital <laughs> society or place. It, 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 you need to have your different uh, categories and you're going to live in the category that you want. Right now, if because people are creating so much fun stuff. Have you seen the stuff they create on Minecraft. Um, I've seen some of it, but not not. They've done like things. I think it's a waste of time, but still, it's it looks beautiful and it, it's amazing what they create. But they're doing it with like big blocks, not even like a like high detail or anything like that. But imagine if they if those guys had the power to create cities or games or whatever a place to live it, it, i think it, we already have a lot of people who would be able to do all that stuff mm -hmm. they just need the the tools and they need the the, the sandbox per se to do all that stuff because they do amazing things not like they can sell them but they do amazing things so i mean so what do you think i mean in, in, in thinking forward is who who's going to be the main actors here in, in vr in terms of you know, creating a virtual world. I think it needs to be neuro neurological. That's it. I, I, if it's not that, I, it's not going to work. It's not going to be true virtual reality. I think augmented reality is more of a baby to VR than the actual VR, or what they call VR right now. Because I, I only see augmented reality working if... You have something implanted in your eye or you're wearing the Google glasses. Something that you don't have to... Because it, it's going to get boring after a while taking out your phone and, oh, look, there's, something's happening on my phone. But or I think putting that... Or putting that thing on your head, like the HoloLens and uh, this, this other company, da Daiquiri, you know, they have these this, this huge thing you put on your head. Kind of not, not like the Google Glass, but similar to it. But, um, but I think augmented reality is more... VR kind of thing because you, yeah. you, you can it's real life and it's there I don't know why they call it augmented reality it's, it's 
VR, virtual reality to me. It's virtual. You're, it's a virtual thing you're watching or looking or whatever. But still, I don't, I don't like the Oculus Rift. Maybe if they gave us one. <laughs> maybe. You know, I'm 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 gonna get one just to see what's what you know what the hell it is. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's always good to uh, you know, to test out the new technologies to see what well, you know. Number one, to see what 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 the what the company is presenting, but also what you can think about differently and say, okay, so this might we might use it for this. We can also use it for that, um, or no, you can't use it for this shit. But you know, <laughs> they definitely haven't thought about this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I mean, it's going to become very predominant, especially in in. In the gaming gaming arena, and, and and obviously in all these other French French um, industries, um, but really, I'm just I'm more interested in, in VR as it as it starts because it's going to move very fast. Hopefully, <laughs> it's going to move very fast. Um, now, and in, in, in imagine this thing if if you know what is DARPA thinking about right now? For example, DARPA, and you you know what DARPA is, right? DARPA is is it's basically the the R and D, <laughs> the R and D arm of the of the United States defense. So I mean, DARPA invented the internet, <laughs> drones, GPS. I mean, all these things. So they're cooking stuff up. The we are probably not thinking, um, and and I know they already you know thinking about um, you know you know brain implants <laughs> in in soldiers' heads. So I mean, if that's already if that's already they're already thinking about that. I mean, what does it even look like in in a VR? <laughs> Films like Universal Soldier are um, seem more of a reality now. Seem more like a reality, and you know it's 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 it's, it's amazing what's what's coming ahead. This is this has been the Big Bang Podcast. Um, it's it's our first episode. We'll be publishing or posting every every a weekly podcast. Um, if you wanna you know follow us, uh, you know follow me at, at Jorge Barba on G, on Twitter. You can also you know visit my website where we'll be publishing these uh, the audios uh, at uh, www.game-changer.net. You can follow Adrian at Adrian Pedrin in Twitter. Um, you know, send us your questions, send us your ideas, you know, would you like to discuss, I mean, what do you think of what we're saying? Um, you know, let's have a roll. Am I full of shit or not? <laughs> I think, I think is, is, is one thing that we'll, we'll, you know, discover on here in this, on this podcast as that, you know, the more full of shit we are, probably the better. <laughs> 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 you know, you, the, the future is, it should be different. It should be the same as the we're used to seeing every every other day um so it's, it's if we, we we seem full of shit it's probably it's probably a good thing we're heading the right direction yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right guys have a good one 